Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about things that you should consider before you start powdering up any of your dry goods. How you're going to want to store them, what kind of things you're going to want to powder, and what you might want to use them for, and how long you plan to keep them in storage. So first let me mention one of the benefits of powdering anything like I have here some powdered orange peel because I dry up lots. Whenever we can get our hands on organic citrus, I like to dehydrate up the orange and lemon peels from those and I have many uses for them. Now, if you're interested in the many ways I like to use orange peels in particular, I will go ahead and link to that video down below that I did, I believe last year, because I'll leave some hole and then some I like to powder up. And you can also see here this bigger jar. So powdering some of your things can give it more uses that you would otherwise not have by keeping the items whole or in chunks. Like I have zucchini. This is my preferred way to store it up is to chop it up, dice it up in little small pieces, dehydrate it, and then this goes well in many things. And then I can powder it up and then use it in other things that I couldn't use the chunks as well in, such as adding to pancakes. I can see in this image here, it does give it a slight green color. And I'll also add it sometimes to different breads, whether it be a sweet bread or a yeast bread, like the hamburger buns. I did a video on those is showing how I used the Z powder in those. It does add uh, not only does it add more nutrition to the bread, it also gives it a nice soft texture. So I really like using the zucchini powder in that, but I keep forgetting I have it and haven't used it in a while. So next loaf of bread I make, which will probably be today, I'll be adding in some zucchini powder. Now this zucchini powder is actually from 2018 and I did not reseal it. I was you going through it, you know, I kept using it. Then it got pushed to the back of the cabinet and I forgot about it and I did not seal it up. And I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. But first let me mention one of the benefits of powdering up certain goods like your zucchini, your orange peels, or even your herbs like nettle, your mixed greens blend, or your, your dehydrated apples. The benefit of that is that all of these things, or most of them anyway, will take up half the amount of space in storage. So what I have in this jar right here, if I was to powder this up, I would be able to fit it into the pint size jar. So I can go from storing it in a quart jar to a pint size jar. So that is a real plus right there, obviously, especially if your space is limited. However, there are drawbacks to powdering great amounts at a time. And one of those, especially in the case of tomatoes. Now these are flaked, not powdered. Apples, see that? Or your zucchini powder, and you can see that. And one of that is, especially if you're not vacuum sealing it between each use, is that the items can, what will happen is it can become hard over time as in the case of these apples. Now I still use them. I just kind of basically have to chisel it out of there with a knife or a chopstick. And tomato, tomato powder is the worst. That will come become like a brick if you do not vacuum seal it after each use when you decide to powder it up. And the zucchini powder isn't as bad. That, uh, while it's kind of compacted in there, even as old as this is, it's still, I can actually stir it in pretty well. Now, one thing I would recommend considering if this happens to you is you may want to reprocess up these items if they've gotten hard, if you manage to get them all out of the jar. Uh, tomatoes are going to be the most, almost impossible if you didn't seal it up completely, vacuum seal it. And even then it might, they, the powder may still harden. The zucchini will be easy enough for me to get out and I'm not going to bother worrying about this because I can just, I know that the consistency and the texture of this, I can easily, once I break it up enough, I can e easily just break it up the rest of the way with my fingers. I actually still have chunks of zucchini in here that didn't get powdered up. So anyway, that that's not a problem. But with the apple powder, 
what I might want to consider doing with this is putting it back into the blender or the blender, which is here. You'll see it's got orange peel in it and I'll talk about that in a minute too. And then possibly add a little bit of like tapioca starch or arrowroot powder to it. Just a little bit, like maybe a teaspoon to a tablespoon. I haven't tried it yet, so it just this is just a guess. But add that in there, powder it up again, and I would think that adding that powder may help keep it looser and not compact and easier to break up again. It's just a hypothesis I haven't tried, so I can't guarantee it. I might do that with the apple powder today. If I do, I'll go ahead and put some results in text and a picture here. Because of my experience with tomato powder, because before I started drying up my tomatoes in this form, and I have a video on this, basically what I do is I process my tomatoes. These are all the ones from my garden. And I will dehydrate them on a sheet on my on my dehydrator. In that case, I do use the plastic sheet that, you know, that's kind of the drawback. Uh, you could still put some parchment paper down over that, but the, that sheet that comes with those dehydrators, it's got raised edges so it holds liquids in and makes it easier to dehydrate. So I'll pour the tomato on there, dehydrate it up, and then just flake it. I do not powder it because it makes it so much easier to use. And then if you wanted to, after taking it out, you can then powder it up. But I can leave this jar open, unsealed, and not have to worry about it clumping the way a powder will. And it, I usually just throw it right into whatever, just as is. So if I'm adding it to my Italian sauces, whether it be for spaghetti, pizza, raviolis, whatever it is, the flakes will disintegrate in the liquid. And that will just actually, so let's say I have my jar of canned tomatoes, then I'll add the flakes. And what that, that will do is they will just dissolve in the liquid of the tomatoes and also help thicken up the tomato sauce as it is. So that's how I thicken it. I don't use tomato paste. Now, the other drawback, as in the case of the orange peels. Now, orange peels, for the most part, these are from last year. They don't, they don't clump together too bad. I mean, it will look like they're sort of stuck together, but that's just because they were packed in there pretty good. But I can shake that and loosen them up. So orange peels, you don't have to worry about them clumping and becoming this brick in your jar. However, what I found out about orange peels, if you let them sit too long in an unsealed jar, even in a dark cabinet, is they will start to lose their flavor and and uh, the smell will start to change too which tells me a lot of the nutrient value is probably going to be gone in fact just yesterday i found a jar that i didn't know again that got buried to the back of the cabinet just like my zucchini powder and it was pretty old and it had been opened and there was only like this much left in it and it was quart sized jar so i had all that airspace in there and I checked it and the it just it did they didn't smell as good as the, as these ones do from last year and I tasted a little bit and the flavor wasn't the same so I just tossed them out because thankfully right now we're doing good on getting organic oranges and being able to put up a lot of organic orange peel now as you can see here this is these are the ones I powdered up yesterday and I'm storing them in a smaller jar now instead of using my regular canning jars uh, I've been getting into these green olives that I can get on Vitacost and they just they make a, a healthier snack than other things but I also like the little jars they come in so now I'm recycling these jars for different dehydrated items and I decided instead of you know again this is from last year so I might uh, break this up into smaller amounts and then put it in jars like this. So I've decided the best idea for the orange peels that I'm going to powder up, that I store them in smaller jars. And this has been vacuum sealed. Now, because this isn't a standard canning jar, this, this is actually smaller than a regular mouth, I used my chamber that Patrick made to seal this up. So this will go, in, go into storage for a longer period of time. And I'm gonna do that with the rest of my orange peels that I want already in a powdered form so they're ready to use as such. 
but I'm not going to be doing a lot at a time. I'm only going to be doing them as I need. And so these are ones I, I dried up this year. I've got more out there on the dehydrator and this has been vacuum sealed and they will stay like this in their whole form. And then if I run out of the powdered ones and I need more than these because they're vacuum sealed, they should stay dry enough that I can easily powder them up in the blender. So I probably won't powder up any more from this year since I have all this from last year. I'll just divide this up into smaller jars and and put it away that way. That way it will reduce the amount of air space that's in the jar when I do start to go use that. And though I don't think I really need to vacuum seal it every time, especially since the orange peels do not collect moisture the same way the other herbs do, by keeping it in a smaller jar, I think it will keep fresher. So no matter what it is you're powdering up, I do recommend instead of going for a quart jar, stick with your smaller jars. I wouldn't go any bigger than a pint sized jar. Even smaller, like a half pint or even a quarter pint, depending on what it is, might be better. So if it's an herb that you prefer to have powdered rather than flaked or in, in pieces when you go to season things, then I would recommend doing even the quarter pint jars and vacuum sealing into those. Now here's another drawback to powdering up any of your items, especially any of your medicinal type herbs, you know, that even if they're ones you're using for flavoring like oregano, thyme, rosemary, and so on, or your nettle, or just your basic mixed greens, which this has nettle in it, is that when you powder it up, you're exposing more of that herb or whatever it is that you're dehydrating to the air. <laughs> and again, this is just kind of a hypothesis and just based on some of my own comparisons. And I think that you're more likely to lose your nut nutrient value in those things quicker than you would if you kept them in more of a whole form. Now I know people that will dehydrate a whole leaf, you know, whether it be basil or sage or whatever it is, and then put them in the jar like that. Now that's going to take up way more room than powdering or even flaking them up. I always flake my things up like this, and you can see that in some of my other dehydrating videos, and then put it in the jar because it's going to take up less space. But that's somewhere in between from putting the whole leaf in there to preserve it even better and then powdering it to take up even the least amount of space. So I like the in-between and plus when it comes to cooking with my different, uh, like adding my mixed greens to soups and whatever, I actually like to see the pieces in there. And the same thing goes with herbs I use for flavoring. Rosemary, oregano, sage, basil. I still like to see that in there rather than putting in powders that can turn my soup, my whole soup green. I'd rather keep them more separated like that. So that's just my personal preference. But anything I'm going to add to a bread, such as the powdered apple, this is really good added to uh, pancakes. So put that in there with your flour, just like you would the zucchini powder, and it adds a nice flavor as well as nutrition. So I'm not gonna want to keep that in chunks. I'm gonna want it in a powder. Same thing with the zucchini if I'm gonna use it in bread. I'd prefer to have it in a powder rather than chunks. Now I just use a regular blend blender when I go to powder anything up. I just throw it in the blender. I believe I show this in some old videos, like maybe even in that orange peel video. And I think in one of my zucchini videos, I might have showed that. But I just put the dried ingredients. Make sure you don't fill it up too high. Like when I do the orange peels, I only put it about this far up. So maybe a cup tops of the dehydrated orange peels. I just throw them in like this and then just run the blender until they're processed into a powder. But here's the thing about whether it be the orange peels, the apples, or even the zucchini, because zucchini has a nice mild flavor, instead of washing your, and this is why I left it like this, instead of washing your pitcher out right away, simply use it to make a smoothie or something else where you wouldn't mind having that little extra bit of whatever that's in there to either add flavor or nutrient value to whatever it is you're making. So orange peel is great for that. I've done that before. I'll, I'll, I'll sometimes, especially in the summertime, make 
uh, popsicles, like creamsicles, or some kind of smoothie that I'm going to freeze up as a treat for Patrick that will be healthier than, you know, buying ice cream from the store, then what I'll do is I'll just leave the orange peel in there, then I'll mix up whatever in the blender, and so you're getting all that in there, and then you don't have to wash the blender twice, too. So that's kind of a win-win a when you do it that way. In case you haven't started using a blender for processing, for drying things, the best way to get the powders out is to take a silicone spatula and just push them down like that. You can see that little bit left in there. Another reason I left some of that in there. And then that will help because it will stick to the sides. And you'll find a lot will be stuck to the sides a lot more. So after you pour out initially what's in there, then make sure you, uh, silicone spatulas, especially a small one like this, is best for doing this and um, you'll get a lot more out of it that way too or you could just leave it in there and then have even more added to your smoothie or frozen whatever it is that you're making and if you're interested in uh, some recipes I have on some frozen treats whether it be you freeze in a glass or you freeze in a popsicle mold I'll go ahead and put that playlist down below I'm sure I'll be coming up with some more recipes this summer so just as a recap when you're going when you choose to make your powders, those more than, than any, those especially are things that you're going to want to vacuum seal more so than if you have them flaked. Just because of the nature that they're already in, they're more apt to clump, they're more apt to lose their flavor and nutrient value when left in a powdered form. So just remember, those are the two most important things. But the, again, the great thing about powdering is, is not only the other uses that you have for them, but the amount of space they take up in your food storage has been greatly reduced. So benefits to both sides. So just consider what it is you're gonna use it in, how you're gonna store it, and how much space you have before you get into powdering and make sure you put them away properly. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, and don't forget to check out the video links I'll be putting down below. A lot of times I'll think of some other ideas that I don't think to mention in the video that as I'm when I upload the video, I'll think, oh, here's a good video to add or playlist to add, and then sometimes I forget to add the ones that I say I'm going to add, so just remind me if I forget to do that so I can make sure I get it in the description box. And also remember, you need to click on either Show More right down here below my channel name if you're on a computer, or if you're on a smart device right over here in this corner just below the video screen, you should see a little arrow. And just click on that. It will open the description box so you can see everything that's in there. And share with us down below, what are some of the favorite things you like to dehydrate and then powder up and then how do you use it? All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.